Hello friends and welcome to the first show it tutorial that I'm going to be doing as part of my free resource series. Um, I really want people to be able to feel comfortable with the show it software and I love it and that's what I design all my sites in. So for this first video I just want to do an overview of the actual show it app. How you log in, what everything does within the show it app so you can kind of navigate your way around. So I hope you enjoy it. All of the sites that I design are in Show It, and I know a lot of people have trouble setting up templates and figuring out how to navigate the interface. So for this video, I just wanted to do just a basic walkthrough of the interface of Show It. Um, <clears throat> so once you sign up for your Show It site, you're going to want to go to app.showit.co, and when you first open the, the site, whatever site you're going to pick, you're going to be greeted with this site. <coughs> So let's get started with this overview. So there's really three main areas to show it. There's the left hand panel side with two tabs, this middle stage uh, portion, and then the right tab over here. So on the left, the le left panel has two tabs, site and page. So on the site tab, you can view your site, overall site settings, the overall design settings, um, and your media library, which has all of your pictures. Um, you can see all the different individual pages of your site. I have a lot because I have a shop and each item is a page. Um, you can see your blog template and site canvases. So let me kind of talk to you about what all these things are. So under site settings, this is literally like just where you have um, all the basic information, your site name, what's your URL, where your blog is located. Um, third party, this is a good one to know. This is where you enter in your Google Analytics ID so that you can keep track of who is on your website and what pages they're looking at. So that's site settings. Design settings lets you set the design and style of the whole site. So you put your color palette in here just by clicking each one and changing the color. And then the cool thing is you can um, use your, you can um, set fonts um, for these different, um, I guess, uh, different font variations if you want to call it. So there's a title text, a heading text, a subheading text, a paragraph text. So once you once you like click these three little dots here, you'll be you'll get a drop down and you can change all the different settings for this title um, font. All right, so um, show it allows you to kind of create these templates if you will. So these four different um, fonts uh, font settings will appear throughout your whole site. So if you ever go back and change any of these, the size, color, whatever, after creating your site, it's gonna update across the whole site, which can be a good thing if you're planning for it or a bad thing if you're not, because if you're changing the size from small to big or big to small or whatever, it might mess up your formatting. So just keep that in mind. Um, up here on the left, you'll see there's two tabs, site style and fonts. So again, the site style is where you set your colors and you specify you know, what fonts you want to use um, and the style for each one of these four different types of fonts. But under this fonts tab is where you can actually choose what fonts you want to have in your site, okay? So for my site, I have Baskerville, Baskerville Italic, Railway, um, I have a bunch of them. Um, so underneath the Google fonts here on the left, these are all the free fonts that you can use and there's a ton. So you can choose to use these. You just have to pick one, say what style you want and add Google font and it'll add it there. Custom fonts are when you want a font that is not a Google font in your site and you have to create a certain um, font file called a, a WOF. So it has a file extension of .woff and you can create those um, at Font Squirrel and there's a little link here with directions on how to do that. So that's the design settings area. Media library, like I said, displays all your images, your graphics. You can create different folders in your media library. Um, you can search things. So um, I have a bunch of folders um, for different products and different clients, yada, yada. All right, so that's those three buttons there. Underneath the pages here, <clears throat> obviously you'll see all the different pages underneath here. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Um, you can duplicate a page simply by clicking it and hitting these three little dots and you can rename it, you can duplicate it, set it as home page, delete it. Um, underneath the pages area, you'll get these blog templates and you'll see there's a little WordPress, WordPress icon next to the blog template page and single post page. So show it's really cool because uh, its blogs are WordPress generated, but the design of the blog is in the Show It app, which is really truly unique and one of kind. 
Um, so once you set these two templates up once, you don't ever have to touch this again unless you want to change the design of your blog. Um, so that's something that's good to know. This is not where you blog. Um, this is literally just setting up the template. Like this isn't even my picture, but it's just telling me what the size of it is and the position of it. So it's just literally a template. So there's two templates for your blog, um, a blog page and a single post page. And like I said, once you set this up once, you don't have to touch it again. And you shouldn't have to if you're buying a theme and it's already made, unless you want to change the size and styling of, of things. <clears throat> so underneath, on the left, underneath these blog template area, you have site canvases. Now this is really cool and show it didn't have this at first. But a site canvas is a area of your site um, that, or area of your page that shows up on every page of your site, or not every page of your site, but wherever you put these different canvases, it's going to be the same on every page. That's a different way to say it. So that way you only have to make changes to this area once. So for example, if I wanted to change <coughs> my about menu, about page to be, you know, meet Katie instead or something, I would only, um, I would only have to change it to meet Katie here and then it'll update on every single page of my site. It'll have meet Katie there. I only have to touch it once. And you can tell that something is a site canvas by these diagonal lines across. This is a canvas. This is the terminology that show it uses for these horizontal areas. Once you hover over something, that's a canvas, um, which we'll get into more. But I just wanted to show you that site canvases, once you, if you have site canvases on every page of your site, you only have to edit it once here and it'll update across the board. So that's this one tab on the left. So let's go to the, um, <clears throat> the page tab. So if you're on a page, I'm on my about page, um, underneath the page up here, you'll see these different horizontal bars. Each one of these is a canvas like I talked about. And again, if you hover over the areas on your site, you can see where the canvas is. And if you click it, it'll highlight over here on the left and you can see all the different layers within that one canvas. If you wanna, um, all right, so let's talk about the middle. Obviously this is the stage where you can see all your edits and content and everything. And um, you always, at least for me, when I'm designing or editing things, I always have both the mobile and desktop view open at the same time. <clears throat> so you can see that by saying show mobile down here on the bottom left. If you just want um, mobile, you just say mobile only, you do desktop only, um, show both. Um, I have both open because keep in mind that when you change content for your site, it'll update both update in both places, but the styling won't, for example. Let's say that I'm changing my, it says I'm Katie Dursky. Let's say my name is Katie Smith, okay? So you'll see that's content. So the content updated there, it says Katie Smith there. And on the mobile side, it says I'm Katie Smith, okay? So let's undo that though. So, but the style of stuff will not update. So for example, let's say I change this color, which we'll talk about in a minute, but let's say I change it to pink, okay? You'll see that it updated on the desktop, but not on the mobile. So to update it, you're gonna have to go into this third area over here, which we'll talk about now. So this third column over here is the formatting for whatever you have selected in this middle part, okay? So I'm gonna undo that. But you wanna make sure <clears throat> that you have both of these open so that if you are changing the style of something, style being color, size, um, you know, that kind of stuff, you wanna make sure that you do, you're doing it both to mobile <clears throat> and desktop. Um, so but whatever you have selected, in the middle here on the stage, all the properties for it are gonna be on the right. So over here it says text style. I can change whatever I want for the text. If I have an image selected over here on the right, you'll see that this is a gallery. So if you hit the gal, these are the gallery settings. There's only, you know, there's a couple of gallery or images in here. You can see um, that this is the different, this is the size of it, the position of where it is, whatever you click, all the properties of what's available to change will show up over here on the right. Um, Whenever you make <clears throat> changes, you wanna make sure you hit publish because they will not um, go live on the web until you hit this blue publish button. Um, but overall, that's just the um, general walkthrough of, uh, of Show It. So I will get into more detail in some more tutorials, but I just wanted to give you an overview of this app. Um, one more little note to make is that whenever you, if you have a blog and you're gonna log into it, this is not where you write posts. So you do not go to app.showit.co to write your posts. Whenever you want to write a blog post, you're going to go to yourdomain.com. So mine is ribbonandink.com forward slash WP admin. And when you hit return, you'll be greeted with a WordPress login page.
um, and it's the same username and password as your site, but this is what you should look at. So there's two different places. When you're editing your site, you go to app.showup.co, and when you want to write a blog post, you go to yourdomain.com slash wp-admin. You'll be greeted with this login page. You log in with your show it username and password, and that's how you get to your blog to write posts. So that's everything, and I will um, be doing, like I said, some more detail things on how to do things and show it. Um, so if you want to learn more and give me specific topics, just email me or comment whenever I post on Instagram asking, and I will take it from there.